One of the benefits of using pivot tables is that we don't have to manipulate our source data. So perhaps a better title for this topic might be selecting data for pivot tables instead of preparing data for pivot tables. But you might end up cleaning things up a bit too. So we won't mess with the name. Just get right to talking about the characteristics of data that will benefit the most from pivot tables. In order to create a pivot table, data should be in the proper format. By this, we basically mean that it all should be contained in a single rectangular contiguous range. Yes, we can consolidate data from multiple ranges into a single pivot table. But for now, we're talking about the basics, not advanced stuff. The data can either be a traditional worksheet range, or it can be formatted as an Excel table. The benefit of using an Excel table as the data source is that Excel will automatically expand and shrink the table as we add or remove data, so our pivot table will always stay in sync. We don't ever have to worry about going back and managing the source data range once it's created. I highly recommend this. Our data can also come from external database files. Regardless of the original source, there should not be any completely blank rows or columns in your data. Excel ignores all of the data below or to the right of any blank rows and columns. Now that does not mean that there can't be empty cells, just no completely empty rows and empty columns. By the way, here's a quick tip when it comes to recognizing if Excel is going to look at your data and see it the way you want it to. Click somewhere in your data and press Control, Shift, and the number 8. This will select what Excel considers to be your entire table. You can then be sure that everything is selected. If it's not, you have a problem and you need to do a little bit of cleanup before you continue. If Excel does select all of your data, then you're good to go. When we're moving on, we realize that the columns should have labels or headings. The headings will be used to create the pivot table rows and columns, so they should be present and also logical, easy to understand, not cryptic, long, or complicated. The data that will be best expressed in a pivot table comes kind of in two flavors, if you will. Traditional values, which we can create calculations with, like sums or averages, and fields that we'll use as categories. These are going to be more descriptive and text-based. They include things like region or account type or even employee or customer names. Perhaps the most important thing about the general format of the data, though, is that each row of data should contain information that describes and is specific to that particular record or row. So take a look at the basic structure of your data, clean it up if you need to, do a once over and be sure things like dates are formatted as dates and text as text and values as numbers. As we build the pivot table from this data, the category fields will act as row and column headers to be used as filters, while the data values will be summarized using some type of function like count, sum, average, minimum, or maximum. We can always go back and fix data after, but it's always best if the data is in good shape before we begin. It allows Excel to make good choices for us instead of us having to tell it specifically what to do. And anytime we can let Excel work its magic without our intervention, it's almost always better for us. Once you are sure your data is ready to go, so are you. You're now ready to create your pivot tables.